and I'm very happy to be with my uh, dearest friends, all of them, and I'm very happy for the very elegant and very nice introduction from my dear friend, Professor Dr. Hatem Darwish, which is really one of the great scientists of nephrology in our university. And I think all of us have learned from him very much. Thank you, Professor Hatem, for your nice introduction. And of course, with the Professor Dr. Yasser Abdul Hamid, Professor Dr. Talif We we'll speak today about updates in diabetic kidney disease. We we'll speak about what, what's new in introduction, epidemiology presentation and trends, pathology, biomarkers, management, and at the end, closing. As we know that, cause of death, forecasting life expectancy, have been changed. The leading cause 2016 was 15 place diabetes and in the 16th place chronic kidney disease. But it's expected to be at 2040 that chronic kidney disease will be at the 50th place and diabetes will be at the 7th place. The China Kidney Disease Network has confirmed that in March 2019 that diabetic kidney disease is the leading cause of chronic kidney disease all over the world which represents about 27% of all CKD causes. And as we can see, its prevalence in the cardiovascular disease, all types, coronary heart disease, stroke, heart failure, usually diabetes mellitus, of course, presenting the first cause for morbidity and mortality. What about epidemiology presentation and trends? As we know that, variations in risk of end stage renal disease and risk of mortality an international study of the patients with type 1 diabetes and advanced nephropathy for type 1 diabetes mellitus, they have shown that this is Diabetes Care 2019. Our lecture today is about all updates. They have found that usually mortality without end stage kidney disease is a minor, which is the black column, while the red column, as we can see when we have end stage kidney disease, the mortality is markedly increased. And Another study for type 2 diabetes in diabetes, which is cumulative risk of end stage renal disease among patients with type 2 diabetes, a nationwide inspection cohort study. As we can see here, when we have, of course, in type 2 diabetes in diabetes, when we have end stage kidney disease here, the hazard risk will be increased markedly. And as we can see here, when we have diabetes in diabetes with the reduction of the GFR below 60, it represents, of course, 10% of the population. And with microalbuminuria or macroalbuminuria, it represents about 20% of the population. And when we have both, usually it is about another 10%. So that when we have diabetes meets, about 40% of these diabetic patients have, of course, chronic kidney disease, either by monofactorial or dual factors. What about the entity which is very important, the non-albuminuric diabetic kidney disease, the risk of progression towards end stage kidney disease, of course, if we have defined normal urea, micro, macro, and market increase in the annual more than 1,000, they have found that, of course, with more increased in the albuminuria in urine, of course, we have had higher cumulative hazard risk in this stage kidney disease. So that albuminuria is a very, very important factor towards progression towards in this stage kidney disease. What about the change in urea? With more, of course, progression in years, and more advanced in duration of diabetic nephropathy, of course, here we have, of course, more sustained albuminuria and more, of course, macroalbuminuria, and this is a very high risk for end stage kidney disease. What about the systolic blood pressure? The same, a recent study in 2019 have shown that the least progression for, of course, diabetic nephropathy, if you have systolic blood pressure between 120 over 130. Below 120, you have marked, of course, reduction and deterioration of your GFR and blood pressure above 130, of course, you have more deterioration of your GFR. And what about the risk factors? They have found that albuminuria is a determinant factor. Usually you are at a moderate risk and at high risk, even in early stages, stage one, two, and three. Of course, when you are stage three, four or five, of course, even whatever the, the level of amnuria you are, you are at high risk towards progression to end stage kidney disease. What about the pathophysiology 
for non-progenic diabetic kidney disease. Of course, if you have female gender, a higher risk because the estrogen usually may produce glomerulosis. Overweight due to hyperfiltration with tuber hypertrophy, hypertrophy and tuber chain damage, of course, will produce glomerulosis. The high systolic blood pressure, of course, will produce hyperfiltration with the same mechanism. And the chronic hyperglycemia produce hyperfiltration with the same mechanism. <coughs> and repeated minor episodes of AKI in patients with a stable or slow detail GFR may lead to glomerulosis and progression towards end stage kidney disease. So that these are some of the mechanisms that you may pursue. And also we have the renovascular causes, which is not mentioned here. A new entity, which must be very, very recognized by us. All of us is thinking that diabetic neuropathy is a gradual process. Yes, it is usually, but not always. We have an entity which has been prescribed by the Clinic International that fast renal decline to intestinal disease, an unrecognized feature of nephropathy in diabetics. As you can see, they have recognized this to four entities. The very fast, the fast, the moderate, and slow. If you have decline of the GFR by about 15 or more milliliter per minute per year, of course here you will be very rapidly progressive to its end stage kidney disease, and your time from starting diabetes, diabetic probably up to end stage will be two to six years. The fast, if you please, the decline of the GFR is about 10 per year. Here, your time into end stage is six to 10 years. If it is moderate, which means five liter per minute, your time to end stage 10 to 20, uh, 20, 10, 20 years. And if it is very slow, which means reduction of your GFR is than five milliliter per year, which means that you have a longer time to end stage disease from 20 to 45 years. So that this explains why some of your <coughs> diabetic patients may be very stable and in a very short duration, even months or two years or more, you may, you may progress to end stage kidney disease. Some people are thinking about this is not diabetic neuropathy. No, this may be a part of your course of the fast or very fast process of diabetic nephropathy. And this is, of course, another diagram which represents how that estimated GFR trajectory patterns. We have several patterns. The patterns may be rapid decline, it may be stable with very slow decline, it may be initial stability, then rapid decline, it may be a moderate decline and then stability, so that it may take different patterns. This will depend on microalbuminuria, of course, retinopathy, neuropathy, smoking, and of course, the epigenetics and your genetic pattern and of these patients. It is important, yes, this is very important, because prevention is the best way for prevention of your patients from duration towards end-stage kidney disease. And the early management, so that the frequent follow-up of your patient, as you can see, in the blue dotted diagram, if we have early treatment, you may slow the progression of your diabetic kidney disease, but if you have intervened later on or late, it will be the red, of course, dotted diagram that will be very rapid progression towards in this stage kidney disease. And hence, this is what's in the new concept about can we regret, the, of course, diabetic uh, kidney, uh, kidney disease? Can we slow the progression of diabetic kidney disease, of course, this is maybe accepted if you have proper prevention with early intervention. What about the pathology? If there's certain parts of the pathology can predict that, this is what's prescribed in the Jason 2018, that segmental sclerosis, two factors in the pathology found, is very deleterious, and extra capillary hyperseriality predict diabetic end stage kidney disease. As we can see, in these diagrams, we have, of course, we have glomerular sclerosis and we have mesangial proliferation. As we ha as they have seen that, if you have from the start glomerular sclerosis and so higher percentage, this will be a very strong predictor towards rapid progression to end stage kidney disease. And if you have extra capillary hyperseriality, especially the mesangial proliferation, of course, it's a strong predictor towards end stage kidney disease. And this is a very important question, which is usually asked and asked and asked, which also has been, of course, uh, uh, was on the table at, by Jason in 2018. When is renal biopsy in the kidney patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus? Of course, when you have a patient with diabetes and proteinuria, 
You should exclude urinary tract infection. You should do urine microscopy, of course, for it. Circus and what circus for other active diseases, of course, quantity proteinuria, renal ultrasound, and serology for, of course, if you have systemic associated other neurological disease. If you have the typical diabetic kidney disease, of course, there is no need for diabetic nephropathy. If you have the atypical, no need, I'm sorry, for renal dialysis. If you have the atypical form, which is azotemia with proteinuria, mild proteinuria, or pillary necrosis, or suspicious of tuberculosis or neurological disease. Of course, it would be a great, a great uh, and wrong that you would proceed for renal dialysis. But if you have <laughs> typical proteinuria, which means diabetes mellitus of short duration, less than 10 years, neuropathy, nephrotic range of proteinuria, or proteinuria without passing to microabnuria, macroscopic hematuria, red cell cast, this would be an indication, of course, for renal dialysis. So that nephrologist should know when to proceed or not to proceed for renal dialysis. What about other predictors of non diabetic disease? If now I, I have a patient with proteinuria, can I predict if this proteinuria may be due to diabetes mellitus or not? Of course, if you have patients with nephrotic syndrome, and this was April 2019, with reduced IG, this is most probably not diabetic renal disease. And if you have non nephrotic proteinuria with increased complement 3 level, of course, of course, this is usually will be non, of course, diabetic renal disease. Disease. Non proteinuric versus proteinuric phenotypes in diabetic kidney disease. As we can see in that, usually most of our patients are proteinuric and the minority are non proteinuric. This was described, of course, this year 2019. And they have seen that, of course, the proteinuric patients are the worst type of diabetic patients, which are going rapidly towards end stage kidney disease with higher risk factor than the non proteinuric one. What about biomarkers? We have several biomarkers that may detect and follow the prognosis and management for diabetic kidney disease. Markers for inflammation, especially several types for tumor necrosis factor, receptors, and soluble factors. For fibrosis, such as connective tissue growth factor and transform growth factor beta, and of course type 4 collagen, and angiogenesis, which is the vascular epithelial growth factor, and of course mineral metabolism, such as the fibrous growth factor 23, and tumor injury, which is the NGAD, the king, and the epidermal growth factor. These are several factors so that you can identify the, 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 the degree of inflammation, the degree of fibrosis, angiogenesis, endothelial dysfunction, mineral tumor injury, and so this can put you in the way for proper assessment for what is your diabetic kidney disease. What about pyruvine? We have found that patients, of course, with higher pyruvine level, of course, are of lower survival rate and they may progress towards end stage kidney disease. What is the new concept now in diabetic kidney disease? It seems that we will have a great change in our, our vision for diabetic nephropathy or diabetic kidney disease, I'm sorry. The new future is for to detect genomics for the genes underlying the disease. The epigenomics, which is the external blood factor that may change that. The transcriptomics, which is, of course, the transcription factor for the progression of diabetic kidney disease. The metabolomics, which is the metabolic pathways which may help you towards diabetic insulinase and the proteomics, which is, of course, the markers for the injury and degree of injury. I think this is, will be the new diagnosis in the future and the new picture. It will not be diagnosed as albuminuria, proteinuria. No, this will be a new player. Of course, this will help in diagnosis, assessment, and, of course, detection of progression towards end stage kidney disease. What about the known as human, human exposome? Human exposome, as you can see, in this situation, there is an environmental factor that may change your genome, so that known as what as exposome, exposure for this genome. What's about kidney risk inflammatory signature? Yes, we have now we have known that they have detected about 17 from 194 circulating genetic proteins that may help in assessment for the degree of inflammation and the progression towards end stage kidney disease, most of it towards tumor necrosis soluble factors. And here, as we can see, there is an important factor that when they have given the JAK12 inhibitor, which is verisitimate, they have found that they have declined the progression towards end stage kidney disease. What about management? Antihyperglycemic drugs. We can see that according to the degree of control of your 
blood glucose level and hemoglobin A1C, the more, the more progression, the less the microvascular complications, the more, of course, uh, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus with macrovascular complication, and of course, we increase mortality. So, hemoglobin A1C is a very important player to decrease the complications, micro, macro morbidity, and mortality in case of diabetic patients. Hypoglycemia, it is not that easy factor in CKD patients. You usually search for it because it may be a cause of mortality and morbidity in your patients. What about anti diabetic drugs and its effect? Most of them, directly and indirectly, usually can affect, of course, has antony effect, but the most important of them is SGL2 inhibitors and glucuronide like peptide 1 receptor antagonists. Metformin usually playing as a protection for that, and it was found in a great study that if it has preserved the kidney functions, it has reduced the degree of agonuria so that metformin is still a cornerstone in your management for diabetic patients and diabetic nephropathy, but of course, you should adjust those according to current clearance if you have declined in your GF bar. The GLP-1 agonist, of course, this is a very important <coughs> as it's clean rear renal protective. They have found that this GLP-1 agonist, of course, they have a great value in reduction of proteinuria and preservation of UGFR so that it's a renal protective drug. Of course, SG2 inhibitors, the same as it has a protective effect for the heart, it has a protective effect for the kidney or the cord cardiovascular diseases. So that SG2, according to the CANVAS and Inbury study, they have found that they, they have a preventive effect, decrease the, the transformation from normal to micro or normal to micro amnuria. They have, of course, progressive effect that decrease the progression from micro to macro, and sometimes they, they may have regressive effect that may have decreased the micro towards normal and macro towards micro, so that it may have a protective effect. As we can see here, the SG2 inhibitors, of course, the more the GFR and its earlier introduction, they can have better control for control of your GFR. This is a very important Slamdorin trial. You have of <coughs> the IMPA kidney trial, which yeah. results will be 2022. We are waiting for the results. And the VIRS trial only, and the, the DAPA CKD is still waiting for the results, but the two trials that have appeared, the Credence trial and DAPA CKD trial, they have appeared, and the Credence trial have shown that, of course, the AG2 inhibitors, of course, have made a an important role in reduction of albuminuria, prevention of double and serum creatinine, of course. I will go more rapidly, okay, <coughs> for that. Uh, we have mentioned that, of course, the, the SG2 inhibitor safety, they have favorable mm -hmm. effects, reduction of the preload diuretic effect, reduction of after load blood pressure, improvement of mitochondrial efficiency, delay, decline of GFR and other factors, but the unfair effect that it may, the top arm, some of them made amputations, volume depletion and hypertension, diabetic ketosis, and other severe tract infection. I will not speak about that, but minagleptin, this uh, was a major trial published in Germany in 2019, had mentioned that it may have a renal protective effect. What about other drugs? Of course, mineral protein blockers. The proven one to have input effect are the statin, the ROS blocker systems, and GLP-1 agonist, SG2, and of course, mineral corticoid receptor blockers. And here are the, the third generation of them, such as Fidilu DKD and Figaro DKD, and they are found that they are protective for the kidney with a minimal amount of hyperkalemia. This is the future. What about other trials? We have the American trial, which is directly an inhibitor. So they have found that it has a same reduction. What about inflammation in diabetic kidney disease? Other drugs have been used in, in trials towards reduction of inflammation, such as metoxifeldin, persimip, and of course, uh, chemokine receptor antagonists and others. I will try to go more rapidly. And of course, these drugs have been, such as SG2 have been reduced markers of definition such as tumor necrosis factor receptor 1. 
What about the sonar study? The sonar study have addressed atrazinten, which is a deuterium receptor two antagonist, and it was found that it has a very, uh, uh, of course, uh, maybe protective for the kidney through reduction of proteinuria and reduction and preservation of DOG fog. So that may be a turning point for chronic kidney disease in diabetes. What about cremazine? Cremazine, Dr. Professor Dr. Amin Rojdi have mentioned that, and of course, microbiomes. And here is one of the probiotics that may preserve your microbiome and prevent the absorption of uric toxins, which is cremazine, which have been used in the market. And this is, can be given by, by, by oral administration, and so that is a conscious concept which I mentioned previously may be very protected. Promising drugs, GLP-1, SGLP-2, RAS, and demethylation by the epigenetics and, of course, uh, apoptotic inhibitor factors. This is uh, the role of epigenetics, as we know that. If we have methylation of the gene, you, will, you may have the gene for diabetes. If you revert this process by, by demethylation, of course, this will be very important. These are some of the drugs which are going in the market that may help us towards epigenetic and prevent demethylation of the gene so that you can change the gene for diabetic nephropathy. And this is the last thing. What about auto uh, autophagy? Of course, autophagy is very important and it is tried in the dogs by insulin-producing cells from other tumor bone marrow using climate stroma cells that may help, of course, towards treatment of diabetes mellitus. So that it is very important now towards primary prevention. In the guidelines, the latest European guidelines, they have mentioned that, of course, exercise, metformin, SGL2, and GLP-1 agonists maybe have a great role. Of course, carbohydrate quality must contain a bit better to contain, of course, high fiber content. This will be very important. And this was mentioned in the diabetic year in May 2019. And, of course, as we have melatonin and the loose tissues, the rest of the melatonin, the rest of the loose tissue, and to reduce, of course, insulin resistance. The dream, what is the dream? This is the last slide. The dream that you have th several therapy options and you have well discussed your patient. You have to diagnose all aspects of your patients regarding his genetics, regarding his epigenetics, his molecular biology, his microbiome, his diabetic property, his course, and according to have several tools and players, inflammation and others, and so that you can personalize the treatment of this patient to reach the end, and thank you.